Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're still in Mahakam, very, very close to the summit meeting with Bruver Hog. But uh, we have a few question marks to deal with first. We can actually. Ooh. Dear son, I've, if you've opened the family tomb, it can only mean your father has passed and now rests in peace beside me. Please do not grieve, for this is the way of life. Always has been, always will be. You're the head of this family now, it won't be easy, it won't be an easy undertaking, but fret not. I set aside a sizable sum for this very day, you'll find it where we used to watch the sunset. May your future be long and bright, your mum of Artvarka. Okay, so that is Hmm. That is a place where there might be a treasure chest hidden. But let's chat with these dwarves. We've now witnessed a sorry sight. A mass funeral for miners killed due to a tragic convergence of events. Their lead caskets lay upon the snow, wreaths of hop cones laid upon them in turn. The mourners waited for the diggers to finish. The digging was tough, for the ground was frozen. As the crunch and thud of picks and shovels continued, the dead miners' foreman scrambled onto a boulder to make a speech. Angry shouts and loud booing stopped him. You knew it! You knew they'd smell vapors, but you ordered them to keep digging till it blew up in their faces! Make the daily quota whatever the cost, eh? You have blood on your mitts, whore son! A mourner then picked up a chunk of frozen ground and threw it at the foreman. Blood spurted from the gash that appeared on his forehead. The first dirt chunk was followed by another, then by a rock, a brick. Meave realized that if she did not intervene, the foreman stood to be stoned to death. Hmm. Do I intervene or not? I don't think I need to... Ah. Of course, they don't have the right to stone him to death, but on the other hand, I don't want to anger Bruver the more than I already have. So, don't meddle. Meave resolved not to meddle in dwarven affairs. She did not know what Mahakam's laws would make of the situation, nor was it certain the accusations against the foreman were true. She spurred her horse and led her force away, quickly leaving the cemetery and the turmoil behind. There we go. You the be a stink cause of this. So yeah, I don't like what it did there, but no. A speech for the four dwarf. Rot slow, ya horse You the be a stink cause of okay. this. So, yeah, I really didn't like what I did there, but I feel like that was, for me at least, the right choice. Because often in this game, I'm making decisions that I wouldn't have made if I was, for example, playing as Geralt. If I was playing as Geralt, I would have stopped those dwarves. But I'm not, am I? I'm playing as Queen Meave, a queen, a fallen queen that has a responsibility towards her troops, her soldiers that are following her. I sometimes choose to take Valerian the high ground and sometimes the don't. the highest section of the Mahakam range. Snow crunched under their boots, cold air stung their lungs, and the wind snapped at their cloaks. <sighs> Meave wiped sweat from her brow and turned to Reynard. There, by the rocks, we shall... The rest of her words were drowned out by a powerful blast. The entire mountain rumbled with a low, vibrating roar. The sound grew louder, echoing off the rocks, splitting their ears. The Lyrians looked around, disoriented. Few heard Gabor's warning. Did I just stand there? Get behind that rock! Quick! Hurry! Me followed the dwarf's gaze and cried out in terror. Avalanche! The snow stuck to the mountainside had started to slide down the slope, sending up mists of icy dust. Oh, the noise. Before she could react, the white torrent knocked her to her knees, crushing her and smothering her into the ground. All she felt after that was all-encompassing cold and fear. Meave survived. The dwarves Holy who ran to the Lyrian's rescue shit. dug her out of the snow in time. Some of her soldiers were not so lucky. The queen looked at their bodies, blue, frozen. Next to them lay dead horses, demolished wagons. The losses were enormous. Meave wiped her cheek. Her tears burned her frozen skin. Wow, that was a reality check. I just lost, I think, around 3,000 coin. 
1,500 wood and 44 soldiers. An avalanche. Of course, it was an avalanche. I'm no fool. But what caused it? What was that noise? <clears throat> Signal horns. Ours. So you brought this snow down on us, dwarves. Well, I, but uh, unawares. Okay. Um. Why the, why the blazing? Explain in brief. See, we clean our mount regularly. The, the, the way men folk shovel snow off their roofs. Otherwise, the whole shebang would come tumbling down on our heads. When snow's gathered deep enough, we'd blast our horns to cause a controlled avalanche. Then we need to but sweep up a wee bit and the road's safe. Well, your controlled avalanche just killed 44 men. All well and good, but why did you decide to clean up right as I was passing through? Wondering that myself. Schedule says next cleaning should have been a week from now, but someone has the route to be cleared earlier. So that's part of the trap we've been hearing about, probably. So somebody told the dwarves and probably Nilfgaardians to do that, but somebody also told the Nilfgaardians when we would be passing by. Who? Me, I'll tell you. But first, Promise you'll. Who? Hey. Ovin Ip Klenvok, the Nilfgaardian emissary. And you listened to the man? Must have found out you'd be going through. The bastard. Reynard. Reynard! Wait! Wait! I understand you're a wee bit upset. You've every right. But you'll never prove Ovin meant you harm. The sly weasel makes sure he didn't dirty his own paws. I've no such scruples. I'll find him and kill him. And then? How'd you tell that tale to Bruva? Meave, you're justly taught, but for the love, just this once, let it go. Or you'll leave Mahakam with near a scrap to show for it. Okay. Moments later, scouts reported Ovain was camped to the north of the accident site. Meave had to decide how much she was willing to risk to get her revenge on the Imperial Emissary. Okay. So morale is already down. Uh, there's this giant pile of snow and yeah, dead guys. So I'm wondering, let me check the map. So I'm guessing that is probably where the Nilfgaardian emissary is holed up. So if I want to take him out, he's over there. But I don't feel like I want to do that. Because Gabor has a point. Again, I'm playing as Meave. I need to keep her revenge in check. Now, there are these other question marks that are left. And I think one of them might be another treasure chest over here. So let's take a look. And see what happens. So these guys we can talk to. By the elder side, Burns, I had no notion anyone was in the Vale. Nilf Guardian said the road was clear. Ah, oh, whore sons. Why did you even listen to them? What a mess. I'm so sorry. With all my heart. Okay. I mean, I can understand that they didn't have any reason to do so. That looks like it is that, right? If I just step a bit further, those, yeah, those are Nilf Guardians. So let's just move past here and move further. And ignore the Nilf Guardians, which is, yeah, painful, but we did have enough resources to While catch them. While passing that. the mining settlement of Kolstok, Meave heard the sounds of battle. Hey ho! Into the fray, lads! Expecting she would see monsters swarming dwarves, the Queen set off at a gallop to the rescue. Her braid blew about in the wind like a banner, showing her men in which direction to attack. The dwarves she saw, however, were not engaged in a battle against Shalemars and Barbigazas. No, they were going at one another. Luckily, no weapons had yet been drawn, but given the dwarves have hands the size of bread loaves, 
This did not necessarily mean there would be no deaths. Oi, lads! roared Gabor Zigrin. What's this foolishness? Calm the hell down, dammit! Gabor's intervention proved successful. The dwarves limited themselves to verbal jousting. Meave, who was no stranger to barrack room talk, nonetheless turned crimson at the dwarves' cursing. Piecing together the obscenities, Meave concluded they were debating an old quarrel about the height of a certain mountain, or rather of the twin peaks atop it. One of them lay in the territory of Clan Dahlberg, while the other in the Hoog's land. Each family felt their peak was the highest, all measurements indicating the contrary being total fabrications. Queen! started Gabor, nervously chewing his moustache. They're asking if you, as yin impartial and a fair-minded wench to boot, wouldn't you wish to settle their idiot squabble once and for all? Neve knew well that this type of age-old quarrel could easily end in bloodshed, so she resolved to help. Representatives of the two clans gave her a strange mechanism she was to use to measure elevation. All that was left was for the queen to button her coat up to the neck and scale the twin peaks. Time to end this okay. Once and for all. So that means we need to pass them and go up here. Wait, is there... I just want to check this. That there's no chest over here, okay? So let's move up towards the peak, which is always a lot easier than it would be in real life. Wait, 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 wait. This might be where those, that family was looking at the sunset, right? Yeah, there we go. There we go, chest for me. And we get Isbel for Gwent to using Gwent status. That is nice, that is nice little chest opened up. And then the peaks, probably gonna be sort when of a puzzle battle, I suppose. Half the way to the first, she heard a long roar that made snow shells detach and descend. Without waiting for her scouts to return with reports, Meave drew her sword. Okay, that sounds like uh, the sound of an ogre. Fighting on a steep mountain slope is no easy task. The Lyrians struggle to find solid footing in the snow propped up by their spears, their eyes squinting under ice-speckled brows. Whereas the beasts, they moved with ease, leaping from rock to rock, long talons scraping menacingly against the stone. So those were slizzards on the card there, but the war was one that's usually connected to an ice troll. We have low morale. Eyes up, lads! They're flying straight for us! Okay, so first one, a slizzard. Which is gonna be fine, I think, if I just put the war wagon all, down. But you won't. And then use Meave to do pretty much nothing, so... Do I have loyal abilities? I don't even have that, so might as well just go with it. Um, yeah, let's just... I shouldn't even do this, because it doesn't really help me, so... Uh, never mind. So it does two damage. There we go. It gets that back with a nice sixer. Then should probably get the Rivian Onager down here or up there. First the Grey Rider. I live to serve you. Grey Rider. There we go. Another one of my units goes down, but I want to get that Rivian Onager on there. Now, the Onager does 3 damage. Whenever an ally is destroyed, I get another charge. So, if I destroy, I can destroy the wolf with this. There we go, and then the turn. And there goes another unit, which means I get another charge on the Onager. Quite the clever little contraption they gave us. Work of a norm, of course. Um... Damage an unit by 10 and adjacent units by 5. You know what? Let's start using the blizzard. So first, back is twisted mirror. So that's damage the highest unit and then heal with the same amount. And then... What does this do? Play a random bronze unit. Okay. There's a time to reap, a time to there we go. and a time to die. Might as well use the Rivian Onager to do damage. Not to waste anything there. And then use Meave to boost the Lyrian Cyclone again. There we go. 
Never get biting frost on all rows. Let's use the pitfall trap first. Let's use it over there. That does three damage. Let's end the turn. The biting frost isn't gonna kill me just yet. Except now, of course. There goes my onager. I could spawn and play the left hook. Because if I do that, I can actually... You should have so damage unit by 15 if it was destroyed deal any remaining damage to another unit which or play two trinkets from my deck but i don't think i have two left in my deck because i got rid of the commander's horn but nothing else so let's deploy the left hook do two damage to that one and then 13 on the bear and the bear oh no the slizzard killed the uh the sideman that was boosted that is annoying Move a random enemy to the row opposite this unit and damage all enemies on it by one. I think I'm gonna boost all my allies over there by four. Might actually lose this. This is starting to hurt. There we go. Then the Rivian Sapper, maybe? Uh, might as well. So move him over here. He gets boosted. Let's damage that one as well. And then we get boosted. Uh, yeah, using Leave is useless at the moment. So I think that's the end of the ride again. Because the Bite Force will kill him. And boost all units on it by four. Fair enough. Uh, the Forager has Zeal. So might as well use him here. Just take the whole finger. And there we go. Now we can do 20 damage, which will probably be 18. There we go. And then just use also Stunder on this one. And I barely won. I barely won. Yeah. Damn. Take those measurements and let's be gone from this place. I actually had a really bad hand, but we managed to the pull Lyrians through. The managed to repel the monsters and reach both peaks. Upon each, Meave ordered her men to take the measurements. While waiting, she admired the breathtaking view of the Mahakaman Massif. The dwarven contraption left no room for doubt. The peak within the Dahlberg clan territory was two feet higher than that within Hoog territory. Gabor was clearly displeased with the results. Damn it all! I'd hope you'd prove Bruver's clan was in the right. He'd have been content to see the Dahlbergs knock down a peg or two. And, possibly, he'd have been more inclined to help you, said the dwarf in frustration. Then, after a pause, he added, Although, only you saw what the device showed, Queen. Perhaps you could, uh, recalibrate the results a wee bit? Tis most lowly and ignoble, Ake cried out in protest. A knight, his honour would never stain with such a lie. I'm wondering... I feel like we have a mole. We have a mole. And the newest member of our team was Gabor. And I'm starting to doubt whether we can trust Gabor. Because I feel like his his ideas about helping Groover might not always been the right thing to do. Because would Brover want... I mean, Brover Hawk, the guy that has that many laws, would he want us to lie to him, to his clan, just for that, just to determine who has the highest peak, I don't think he would. I'm starting to feel like Gobber might actually be a bad guy. Um, let's give the true measurements. To lie would be simple, true, said Meave. Yet to forget the matter would be so much harder. No, Gabor, I shall tell the truth. The Queen's tone made it clear the discussion was over. Gabor let the matter lie and Meave's force began its descent down the mountainside. And that also makes me wonder whether I need to check up with the Nilfgaardians anyway. Because Gabor tried to steer us away from them because he said, well, Bruver is not going to like that you interfered with the Nilfgaardians that way. But on the other hand, if the Nilfgaardians know what? Yeah, if the Nilfgaardians know who the is the traitor. Both clans had been waiting with bated breath for the expedition's return and report. As soon as Meave announced the results, the Dahlbergs rolled barrels of beer out into the square and began to celebrate. 
Naturally, the Hoogs were disappointed, yet they accepted Mi's results as final. At last, they had come to trust her. There we go. That sounds great. That sounds actually like a really good solution there. Now, the Nilf Guardians. What do we do with them? We might actually have... No, we don't have a letter, I think. It's just... It was just a pitfall trap that was new, so to speak. This is a hard decision. Do I check out the Nilf Guardians or not? Because I think... We have one more question mark right before the bridge. And then we have... Mahakam itself, so the summit meeting. Mount Carbon itself. Let's go check out that question mark. For first, mate, you'd best avail yourself of some onion juice. Even better if you had a wee nip of vodka. Okay, onion juice. Oh, snotters are frozen solid. Not just those in my beard. Why not my nose too? Ah, that was gross. Once we're neath carbon, we'll find a way to the tavern. Set our arses down by the fire and set the mugs of mouth wire. Once we're neath carbon. That sounds good. That sounds like a, a really good time. Yeah, of course. Hoover Hog is still mad with us and we don't know why. As Meeve neared Langbridge, she ordered her bugler to announce her arrival, then retired to her tent to freshen up. Gascon was already inside, awaiting her. I do not seem to recall summoning you. In that case, I must tell you to fret not. Nothing wrong with your memory. I've come with no agenda. Spontaneously, Colin, to chat. Hmm. Then I propose you leave. Just as spontaneously, call it. I must don fresh clothes. I'm to see the Elder soon, and I'd prefer to not smell of horse sweat. Doubt it'd make much difference to him. And be assured, I know what I speak of. When last we met, I found myself standing downwind of him. A pungent experience. Okay. I do admit I was reminded of an old goat in more ways than one. <laughs> okay, I do want to know what Gascon is doing here. Because I feel like he might have information about who the mole is. Except, of course, if he is the mole. But I feel like they're setting up Gascon and Reynard as two of the com companions that are going to be here with us till the end. Well, he was saved the experience of his breath. So pungent, I thought I might faint. Well, to revive you, pinch you awake, I'm sure would be quite a pleasure. Okay. That was... Um, yeah. Yes, gone. I beg your pardon. Oh, I shall have nightmares now. Not tonight. For I fear you might not sleep at all. You see... There's something you ought to know. And decidedly before you meet with Bruva. The sights we cleared of beasts. I ferreted a bit. Noted something peculiar. Any notion what it was? None. The monumental dwarven architecture, perhaps? Bones, my dear Meeve. Dwarven bones. Now, guess what I found on them? Wait, don't dare give me any hints. Bite marks. Of course. After all, they'd been gnawed clean of all flesh by monsters. Incidentally, making it quite easy to spot other markings. Ones made by axes and swords. To be certain, I showed the bones to our medics, and they confirmed my conclusion. Meaning what? That the entire clan, the Fuchses... ...did not perish due to an invasion of beasts from the depths. The monsters merely ate the bodies and occupied empty homes. Now, I shared my discovery with Gabor, and guess what he did? He panicked. He started to squirm, babble nonsense. I wager my right arm, he's hiding something. And there we go. Gascon actually suspects Gabor of treachery. Christ. Overly eager to aid us from the start he was. I might have sent something. I shall have him summoned at once. And I thank you, Gascon. I won't forget this. There we go. So Gabor might actually also be the traitor that ratted us out to the Nilf Guardians. Minutes later, Gabor stood before the Queen. At first, he tried to mislead her with evasive answers, but as her pointed questions demolished one clumsy excuse after another, he had to give in. Oi. As King Desmond said after a hefty squirt in his hose, we can't sweep this under the rug. 
If you think I welcome jests in this moment, you err. My fingers itch to summon the hangman. Right. So... Tis true. I misled you. On our clan elders' orders. Okay. On our clan elders' orders. There we go. Supposed to make sure you destroyed Boris Rump and Davos Abyss thoroughly enough to leave Nea Trace. What? Why? What did they wish to hide? Yeah, the slaughter of the Fuchs. He was home to the Fuchses, our mortal enemies. They'd been a boil in our hideys for ages, thumbing their noses, taking what they want, when they want. And the Elder in Chief didn't give a plowing wit. So to stop them, our clan, we did the unpardonable. The Zigrin Elders saw their chance and they... Gods. So you were responsible for the deaths of all those dwarves? Me? I, I didn't raise a finger. Tried to stop them, in fact. How did they... So, wait. Uh, I think Yellow continues the conversation, so let's go with the... Uh, uh, the white one, right? Ah, this is annoying. I don't want to miss any conversation options here. No witnesses survived. Meaning you must have murdered the entire clan. How? Queen. You sure you... I am. And you should be sure to answer in full, omitting no detail. A few years back, we got pummeled by a horrendous winter. Stone-breaking frosts, white-out storms, avalanches. We'd travel in a painful form of suicide. Hunger drove beasts out of their dens. Pass was covered in the filth. Got to where they paced right outside the walls. Fuchses fought a hard, bloody fight to keep the critters out of Davos' abyss. Lost near every axe-wielding dwarf they had. Only survivors had to winter at Burr's Rump. Our elders felt such an opportunity wouldn't they knock again. After killing the town's meagre guard, they... They set fire to it and barricaded the gates. They, they didn't stand a chance. Bastards. And no one ever investigated what happened, because if a whole clan just died in a fire... Especially in a snowstorm, that's going to raise suspicions, I suppose. How in the world did the truth go undiscovered? Once it were over, our dwarves opened the gates. Before they'd let their pipes, starving beasts came crawling out of the pass. The stank of dead flesh were strong. Zigrins who came back from that never were the same. If you'd only gandered their gaze when they had us all take a vow of silence. And then... You invented that blarney about primeval monstrosities the Fuchses had awoken by mining too deep. A riveting tale, and one with a moral to boot. Aye. But the Elders worried Bruver would suspect something all the same. That's why they wanted you to destroy all the evidence. So that is, that is interesting. So, because I was hesitating about who he meant, who he was talking about when he was talking about the Elders, because they talk about Bruver as the elder in chief as well so Bruver didn't know that's important to know as well repugnant um so could you truly not stop this massacre you claim not to have taken part but neither did you do anything to stop the massacre what was I to do exactly the elders had decided the dwarf would listen to me you might have informed the elder in chief the guilty would have been punished the guilty you didn't ken Bruver He'd punish the whole clan. Women, children, no exceptions. Maeve, Queen, I'm begging you. He cannot ever learn of this. Aye, I want a hack flame too when I think what the Elder's done. But t'other way it'd bring but more pain and death. I'll give it due consideration or that's some nerve. Um, so I... Don't think I need to decide it here. I'll give it due consideration or that's some nerf, but we still don't know who who informed the Nilf Guardians. God damn it. I'll give it due consideration for now. I need to consider what's right. Meanwhile, Gascon, make sure Gabor remains our guest. Of course. I'll let you know if he so much as rolls his eyes towards an escape route. Okay, does that mean that that was the final? Yeah, it was. So, 
question is we want to go and attack the Nilf Guardians. Just going to check out this marker first. Not get, nothing's going to happen on that, but at least I know for sure then. So Mahakam seems to be cleared out of pretty much everything aside from, I think, one more treasure map. So we'll do that in the next episode and that, but I don't want to interact with that either. So, yeah, I'm going to take a little break. And next time we'll decide what to do with the Nilf Guardians. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And uh, see you guys next time in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.